Dr. Speaker, it is high time that the federal government recognises the need to have a trans borneo railway linking Sabah and Sarawak to Brunei and Indonesia as we are lagging far behind the, on road and rail transportation compared to Malaysia. Malaya siphons 80 billion from Sarawak annually. But our infrastructure is far behind that of Malaya. Without any doubt, the Territorial Sea Act and the Petroleum Development Act 74 is an unfair deal for Sarawak. I urge the federal government to seriously consider turning the trans borneo Railway into reality to accelerate development and provide an alternative, an alternative public transport option for Sarawak and Sabah. Our visionary leader, our YAB Premier, has been pushing for this proposal to go through. Transport Minister Federer has agreed to a feasibility study. However, we would like to emphasise the need for prompt and tangible action. Not just the carrying out of years of feasibility studies, which could be flushed down the drain again and again any time there is a change of government. That was what happened to our Pan Borneo Highway. The building of the Pan Borneo Highway was mentioned, was mentioned more than 10 years ago. Then after the 2018 election, 3 billion was slashed by the new Pakatan Harapan government on the premise that the project management consultant was not necessary. To this day, the Pan Borneo Highway is yet to be completed. The Trans Borneo Railway project is estimated to cost 63.3 billion. However, the high-speed railway between KL and Singapore currently under discussion is estimated to cost 110 billion. And this KL Singapore Railway only serves to bring added comfort to elite, elite travellers. I hope our member for Padungan, also member for Stampin, can remind our Federal Transport Minister that because Sarawak contributes 80 billion annually to the national coffers, the KL Singapore Railway project should be set aside for now and ensure that the Trans Borneo Railway takes precedence. The railway project is of utmost importance to boost Sarawak's economy, not just for the elite, like in Semenanjung, Malaysia. Indonesia is already improving its rail transport in Kalimantan, and if Sarawak is not doing that, we stand to lose a great deal. In addition to connecting cities around Borneo Island, this railway will also provide access to the interior for mining operations and transportation of raw materials, thereby speeding up the development of the rural areas of Sarawak and Sabah. Rail is a smart, sustainable and an efficient way to move freight and people. The federal government cannot give lamb excuses such as low population density in the East Malaysia, non-profitability, and try to shelve the proposal based on these excuses. 80 billion being siphoned is a lot of money. Implementing public transport such as the one and only railway network in Sarawak should be considered should not be considered for profits at all, but as an investment by the federal government to improve the region's wider economy. It is time to give back to Sarawak what is dutifully ours after 60 years of independence. How many ba more barrels of oil worth billions does Malaya need to siphon from us before it decides Sarawak deserves to get at least one railway line?